Hello, John with John Bond Performance here, and today's topic is going to be how to properly diagnose and test a vacuum operated bypass valve. First, some uh, topics of information. John Bond Performance is a world leader in remanufacturing superchargers and rebuilding them. We also offer a very large online parts store. Um, most consumables, I should say almost all types of consumables and repair kits for your supercharger. The best way to contact us is by email. Uh, we tend to receive many phone calls throughout the day and email is going to assure that, uh, that you hear from us. Uh, if it's urgent, then yes, please call us, but uh, uh, by all means, uh, email is going to make sure we have thorough contact and we have no problem dealing with international business. Uh, we export and uh, and with that said, let's get to the topic. Uh, uh, bypass valves basically come in various sizes and shapes, and I have one here from a Whipple supercharger. I'm going to show you how it works here in just a little bit. And uh, but what I want to do is show you how to properly test a failed bypass valve. So let me remove this here. Uh, one of the most popular methods for testing that can sometimes tell whether or not you have a good one is you push the lever in, spring, it's a spring loaded lever, and you push it in and you push on the vacuum or suction side, it's usually towards the rear, and you put your thumb over and block it. Now if this retracts all the way back out, obviously it's got a hole or it has a leak, and this one almost retracts all the way and it hardly holds a vacuum. Whereas this one, now it has two ports, one is to pull it back and the other is to, as a suction side, uh, to retract the lever and then sometimes they have a port on different cars that will actually pull the lever closed, in other words to close the bypass valve in case there's a low vacuum condition. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to push this lever all the way in, block the suction port, and watch when I let go. Okay, the lever actually comes out. This is a good one. Alright, so now back to this failed unit. I have a brake bleeder vacuum pump kit. It's nothing fancy. Uh, it just does the job. And, uh, but that's all we're looking for here, but we're going to connect this up. Well, if I can get it. There we are. Nice tight seal. And what I want you to do is watch in correlation. We're going to be able to draw a vacuum on this, and it's going to work when mounted on a car. But I'll show you why it's no good. Build up a vacuum here up to 15. Okay, it's working, it's functional, it's opening and retracting, but notice the gauge. It's dropping. And the reasoning for that is this has a small pinhole in it, so this would be like a vacuum leak on your car. While this will open and retract, uh, functionally, it's not going to uh, work properly on a car simply because you have a vacuum leak, and then what happens is your, if your tuner doesn't catch it, then he has to tune around that and uh, basically he'll add more fuel to your car. And then what happens if you add something like this in later and correct the problem, all of a sudden you start having a rich condition. So it's always important when you go to tune a car that everything is just functionally working. So now this is obviously not a severely failed unit. Most of the time you can't even pull a draw on it. In fact, I'm going to poke a, a big hole in it so you can see what I'm talking about. But you can see this unit continues to drop. Now on a car, again, it will still work. So if you were to look under the hood, you go, yep, my valve's working. But in essence, it's actually no good. All right. I'm going to show you how a good one will work. So you can sit here and watch this lever. And I'm up to 15, and it stays there. Okay? And that's how a good working valve should be. I'm going to show you how it works on a car. Okay? 
So this is that Whipple unit I have. I just want you to be able to see what's really going on here. Alright, so this vacuum, we're going to draw a vacuum on. You can see what's going to happen to this butter. Whoops, get my thumb out of the way. You can see what's happening. And of course, uh, has to hold that vacuum there to be functionally proper. All right. Now I'm going to poke a hole in this bad bypass valve just so you can see what I'm talking about. Let me grab it all. All right. We're going to completely make this thing fail now. Uh, boy, that's a tough one. There we go. Got a hole in it now. So now this is usually where most people would replace them because if I push my finger in, I mean it does nothing. And if it was on their car, it would do nothing. Let me get that on there. Wow. I had to make that difficult. All right. So I've got the hose hooked up. Now I'm going to try to draw a vacuum. And you can see I'm pumping to no avail. This would be functionally failed on a car as far as mechanical. So uh, you can see that it's important to have one of these devices to physically test uh, the uh, worthwhile value of, of a bypass valve. This is a good contributing uh, part to failure of superchargers on a car. That's why I felt it was important to talk about it. Many times people don't send their bypass valve in with it. I highly recommend it. We'll test it for free if it's coming in here with a supercharger repair. I mean, we have no problem uh, testing this. And we'll be carrying various types on our website for replacement. And uh, uh, a key to helping you replace these is sometimes there's a VA number down in here that's stamped. Uh, you just look for the right VA number. You look at the shape of the bracket and the shape of the lever, whether it's towards the bracket or away from the bracket. And then another thing that can change or be different is how many ports. Now, it's not really important how many ports are on there, but where is the port in relation to the bracket? Because there might be clearance issues. Now, it's not critical where it is if there's no clearance issues, but if you've got an intake down here and something here, it's critical that this piece be pointing up instead of down. And uh, an example would be like this one. This one points down, whereas this one points up. Okay. So placement of, of this can be critical if you don't have good clearance issues. Um, and then the shape of the bracket, what you're usually looking for are the two mounting hole patterns. As you can see, this one is circular got a circular hole in it. Um, this one is very similar to this one and uh, functionally they do the same thing. I'm going to be carrying various sizes of these on my website over the next uh, four to six weeks. Everything should be on there but uh, I'm going to try starting to carry all of these types of bypass valves for you. Um, I have some used ones. They'll be price reduced but uh, Almost all of them will be uh, uh, news, and uh, they all come with warranties, even the new and used ones. So I hope you found this article informational for you. Good luck. Have fun. Happy boosting.